Fanatic in Trouble, Rennsport and LMU updated and more right here, right now. Welcome, you're watching Rum Rum, the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and a regular news roundup, our weekly sim racing news. Thanks to all those who come here often, especially those who subscribe and even more, our patrons. My name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. What a bomb! Fanatic CEO got sacked. We'll analyze this news in a minute or two. Rennsport delivered their promised update and it's a change like day and night cycles. Oh man, that was a bad one. Le Mans Ultimate also delivered a big update as big as one of Razer's and we have tons of small news as customary. 328 AM. So, Reza published their promise update to Automobilista 2 again on the night from Saturday to Sunday, which doesn't leave us much time to analyze it, so we'll have it ready for next week. Because a day only has 24 hours and today even only 23 because of that very stupid, useless and dangerous daylight saving time. Back to yesterday's recording. But the most important thing we have to tell you is about Dean. Do you hate cancer? Do you like spa? Do you like endurance? Do you want to test yourself and your buddies against some of the best Assetto Corsa Competizione drivers out there? Then join the kick cancer in the n drive for Dean race. This race has been designed for and with Dean Hyde together with the other communities he races in. Dean has cancer and lost the battle, has 3 to 6 months to live and he wishes to host an endurance race with all his sim racing communities. And we are more than happy to oblige as well as humbled to be asked to be part of this great idea. On April 20th, we will broadcast the event and will collect as much money as we can for the Macmillan Cancer Support at Charity Dean Chose. In fact, you can already donate through the link up there and in our description as well as using this QR code. One to five drivers per team are allowed to compete in this six hour race in Spa. Qualifying will start on the same day at 1600 or 4 pm CET, so even you sim racers in the Americas can participate. Our broadcast and hopefully the race will start at 1830 or 630 pm CET. The link to the registration is in the description of this video and we've created a discord specially to coordinate the race and answer any questions you may have. The link is also in our description. And of course, we're searching for co-commentators for this event, as we three are not enough to do this event justice. Come to our Discord and we'll get you sorted out. Don't worry if you've never done this before, we are here to help. We already have 41 teams set up and can have up to 18. Come join the race and donate, donate, donate. Let's kick cancer together. Le Mans Ultimate saw yet another big patch and a tiny hotfix this week. Studio 397's developers seem to have gotten up to speed as this is the second big-ish update in so many weeks. Now when the sim crashes it will automatically collect the crash reports. One reason less for crashes though will be having no sound devices available. Also, if you get teleported by the sim into or near to another car, there will be no collision between the cars. The virtual fuel information and the speedometer overlays have been updated. Estimates at the beginning of the race as well as fuel consumption by the AI have been corrected as has the issue with the MGU deployment draining energy too fast. The AI drives better now as well as more carefully, especially but not only on turn 1. And AI lapped cars behave better, not trying to aggressively unlap themselves any chance they get. And you won't 
won't see their tire wear in your HUD anymore. The virtual energy display on your HUD shows how many laps you can make with it. Fuel capacity has been changed to fuel ratio and fuel and energy usage now show two decimal points. The intro video can now be skipped, hallelujah, and the session lengths can be set up at any length you want. Just don't make it one minute for Le Mans. In online mode, you will be notified when the race results are available as well as when there is a server issue and the event needs to be cancelled and the weather forecast is more accurate now. An old friend from R Factor 2 times reared its ugly head with force feedback becoming somewhat erratic when other users joined the server, but this has now been solved. The grip in all tracks has been adjusted, but they don't say if it's more or less grip now, as well as many graphic details corrected or updated so they don't make the GPU performance drop. The cars have also been updated, the balance of performance has been adjusted for the GTEs and some of the hypercars, rain lights have been added to the Aston Martin VH Vantage GTE and the Corvette C8R GTE, also the headlights of the Ferrari 488 GTE and the Corvette C8R GTE now reflect in puddles as well as many other assorted graphic issues like the Corvette C8R GTE having a hole in the rear wing. The Oreca 07 LMP2 got a ton and a half of changes, mostly around pit stops. As always, we have a link in the description for the full details of all these changes. On hypercars in general, pit stops have been changed in the same manner as in the Oreca 07 LMP2, and a lot of changes in the graphics have been made, like updating LODs, which hopefully reduces the load on the graphic engine, as well as tweaking the cameras. The rear differential preload of many of them has been fixed and many general changes have been made to the rain graphics and the windscreens. And we recommend Studio 397 to have a 4i principle before releasing the change logs as there are many repeated sentences within one and the same car and similar errors in the text. We should know because we also could need a check to our scripts for sure. We've been saying it for over a year and we're not the only ones noticing it, Fanatic is in trouble. With regards to the bank's lending Endor, Fanatic's parent company enough money to move ahead, they saw that similarly. But let's start at the beginning. Fanatic moved most of their operation to Landshut into a new building and have finalized most of that move by now. For such an endeavor, it's common to have one or more banks finance it because this eases the monthly load on the finances of a company. Nothing new or special about that, all common practice and common sense. Now, the twist in this story comes because Ender's supervisory board had to negotiate a standstill agreement with the lending banks. This kind of agreement can mean many things in the financial world and Ender have not disclosed what it meant here exactly, but it's not far-fetched to expect some kind of financial standstill. Either the banks didn't want to continue lending the money and wanted it back immediately, or Ender wanted more money Lent or something like that, which leads us to presuppose Ender Fanatic are in bigger financial trouble than we all thought until now. On Thursday this week, Ender Supervisory Board and the banks reached a standstill agreement, with the bank setting the condition of Ender dismissing until now CEO Thomas Yakamaya from Fanatic. Ender Supervisory Board announced the dismissal on Thursday, making it effective two days later, which was yesterday. Today. It seems the banks only trusted Fanatic's financial future as long as he was no longer deciding its strategic direction. This comes after the director of Endo's supervisory board quit his position in the middle of February. After the pileup of problems at Fanatic's, we and others have been reporting over the years, bad communication, worse customer support, lack of innovation are the most talked about, a new CEO, which by the way has not been announced, may bring fresh ideas, a better concentration on customer satisfaction, and overall a better fanatic. May or may not. I've dealt too long with big-ish companies to put too much trust on the C-level of a company to really understand how their company is doing. 
But yes, we expect Fnatic will be moving in a different direction soon, even if Yakamaya, to the best of our knowledge, continues owning a big chunk of the company. We had not heard from Wreckfest in a long while. Now you can race against drivers that are not on Steam, but who got Wreckfest from the Epic Game Store or GOG. And while the developers were at it, they made the server side code better for smoother multiplayer. SnowRunner will release the Atom Heavy Duty Truck as standalone DLC next week, something that has never interested me but seems to sell well enough. And the team released their year 4 season season plan, but it seems they don't know yet what to release in season 16, the last of this year, so it's only half a content roadmap. Expeditions released its second update already, adding the Scout 800 as free truck in the game, changing the price of the default tires to zero so you cannot sell them and make a profit, and the issue with the so-called magnetic stones that got stuck on the suspension of the Lodestar 1700 has been released. Resolved. All outposts now can hold four vehicles, the air delivery quest can be solved at last, and the metal detector now only shows existent upgrade zones. Also, some sounds were updated. These are not all changes, so head down to our description for a link to the complete list. And here we are with the promised Rennspot update and our promise to get down to the details as soon as it's out. Sure, the Goodwood Hill Climb is here as well as the Porsche Mission R and Time Trials. The day and night cycle can for now only be enjoyed at Spa, but there's more to come in future updates and of course with day and night cycles come working car lights for all cars. But there's more, as now the brake discs glow when heated and you can see the tires deforming and wearing off. This comes in line with different graphics, technology adaptations the team has done. Amongst others, Rennspot now uses the Unreal Engine in the 5.3.2 version, as well as the newest NVIDIA DLSS version, and while they were at it, the team did some tweaking of the code so that the CPU use suffers less and therefore delivers more, especially with more cars on track, leading to higher frame rate stability and even improved server performance. Using telemetry for example will not strain your CPU anymore. You can now set up different sharpness levels in the video settings but can't choose FPS specific to the mirrors anymore, and you can change the email address of your account. You can also set traction control, brake bias and ABS while you're waiting for the countdown to end. Ah, and if you're in single player mode, entering the in-game menu will pause the sim. All cars have had their shift lights corrected and have more drags and all cars produce tire lockup sounds when you are locking up your tires, that is. On the hardware side of things, Rennspot will now detect the hardware you are using and if possible use a fitting default preset. These wheels also had their presets updated. The team has of course fixed tons of bugs, among them server bugs, problems with saving replays and on-track marshals sometimes not waving flags correctly. The penalty system got rid of some nasty bugs that penalize drivers for no reason. Your car will most assuredly not flip on the roof in the garage anymore and grass is now less slippery. Unluckily, the team only released the update notes in their Discord, our link below is directly to the Discord, of which you have to be a member to be able to see them. As you heard in the news last week, Rennspot as promised delivered the first update to the behavior of the GT3 tires, which they say will be followed by further updates. The GT3 tires have a more consistent grip, the slip curve has now been corrected and the better tire cooling means the tires will last longer. Two car specific changes come also with this update. The aero balance of the BMW M4 GT3 has been corrected as has the top end torque of the Porsche 911 GT3 R992. Not everything has been solved with this update and the team also delivered a long list of known issues we won't get into here.